Yeah, my name's Frances LePage and I'm the product manager for Moodle Cloud. So, uh, Moodle Cloud, what is it and what do we provide? Uh, Moodle Cloud is a software as service uh, version of the Moodle LMS, or as we call it, Moodle as a service. Um, it's built, maintained, and managed by Moodle HQ. Uh, Moodle Cloud provides our customers with the latest version of Moodle. So as soon as a new release comes, we usually do the upgrades after the minor release, um, which means uh, Moodle offers a quick, reliable, stable, and secure hosting solution uh, for educators around the world, just on a smaller scale. Uh, so who do we serve? Uh, Moodle Cloud currently serves uh, about 213 regions, over 20,000 sites. Um, our top five countries at the moment are America, India, Spain, Australia, and uh, Mexico. So we've done a little map just to show you on that. <laughs> um, so next up, I'm just going to talk a bit more about who our customers are and what that is sort of focused on. So we've conducted market research over the past two years to really understand who our customer base is and what are we providing for them and what do they need. Um, we found three common segments for our customers where there's 25% of them who are focusing on training their staff. 30% are e-commerce, so for example, they're selling courses to educators or businesses. And we've got 45%, which is teaching um, in schools, colleges, universities, those sorts of things. Um, that's just the major ones. Uh, we were able to develop personas from understanding those three segments. And we use those personas to help our team make decisions um, about what our users' needs and requirements are. And so our main focus over that for who we serve at M Moodle Cloud is the individual educators. So these individual educators include, we have, uh, what's her name? Sarah, <laughs> sorry. Sarah is our teacher, for example. Um, you know, she's at an individual educator at a small business teaching vocational students, and she needs an LMS that's reliable and easy to set up um, without all the technical skills to host and maintain our site. As some of you know, it's not a simple process sometimes. Um, next up, we have Matara, who's a HR manager. Matara needs something that's reliable to be able to train her staff um, and ensure that her staff has access to the organizational uh, learning information. Then we have Wally. Uh, Wally needs to uh, sell his courses. So, for example, in his situation, he's selling to voc vocational individuals. Um, so his needs change slightly from the... He still needs something that's reliable and secure, um, but he needs to be able to have those payment systems to be able to sell his courses. So, um, what can you do with Moodle Cloud? Uh, Moodle Cloud is the Moodle LMS, so you can utilize all the inbuilt tools and activities that Moodle has to offer. Uh, you can make the most out of your Moodle Cloud with, without the, all the technical hosting because we take care of that. Um, so to keep things simple um, and safe, of course, as Greg was just saying before, unfortunately, we don't allow our customers to have access to the database, so you aren't able to install your own plugins and themes, but that doesn't stop you being able to use, make the most of your Moodle Cloud site using all the, the great things that Moodle has uh, in its core. So using those great things, you can still build wonderful courses. Um, you have access to the tools such as H5P, LTI, um, and Moodle activities, such as the most commonly used ones, assignment, forums, and quiz. Um, and there's an, cool things with uh, the Moodle Cloud, you know, if you have lots of files, because we do have our different um, plan sizes, um, you're able to link your Moodle Cloud site to repositories such as Google Drive. 
Um, you can do this by creating new projects within your Google uh, Developer Console and add that to your Moodle Cloud site under OAuth services. And once you've added that, you can uh, enable that under management authentications. Pretty cool tool, really. Um, another amazing thing that I'm going to shout out to Paul is that we now link up to MoodleNet. Um, so now that Moodle 4. Point, now that Moodle Cloud is on Moodle 4.0, you can directly link up your site uh, to MoodleNet and search all the content under that. Um, it's really quite simple. It's under any other activity. Um, when you're searching for activities, you can find MiddleNet and you can click in there and link up to your profile, which is really awesome. Um, another really cool feature of Moodle Cloud, if I do say so myself, um, is our ready installed document converter plugin. Uh, this enables you to automatically convert an uploaded assignment submission to PDF format for teachers to grade and um, uh, yeah, grade and basically do feedback, comments, stamps, highlights, all those, CD, all those sort of things that you need to do within it. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a really cool feature. <clears throat> As some of you might not actually know, our Moodle apps, we have um, access to the premium plan. Um, so this plan includes unlimited active devices for push notifications, unlimited access to offline courses, customized app features and all a lot of other cool stuff you can check out on the uh, website. And for a lot of our users um, that might, their first time coming to Moodle, they are um, looking for a, a quick and easy way to set up so they don't really understand how to use Moodle and that's another awesome thing that we now have is Moodle Academy. Um, there's some really cool courses about uh, admin basics, um, and there was like a language one recently and all these sorts of things that help you set up using Moodle. So, And the next thing is once you outgrow your Moodle Cloud site, if you need something bigger, um, a feature that we have inbuilt in our Moodle Cloud portal is the ability to export your entire site. And from that, you can go to one of our Moodle services or our Moodle partners and they can take that site, um, take that back up basically, and get all your really cool hard work onto a new hosted service that they can then customize, um, add some new features, add plugins, themes, for example, and things like that. So it's quite an easy transition, um, and you can all do that yourself. Or you can ask the Moodle partners and services to help you to do that as well. Um, I think I'm really quite ahead of time, but um, <laughs> talked way too far. Sorry about that. Um, what's next for Moodle Cloud? I'll run through that and try and slow down a little bit. Uh, we're really focusing on researching our users' needs and diving deeper into the individual educators and going through those personas that I was talking to you about. Um, and what do they need? I know everyone's heard about these things, course templates. So. For example, we've got our educator, you know, what would they need when they first hit Moodle? So they sign up for a Moodle Cloud site and they come to that page. What do they need to help them get really started? So that's what we're going to be focusing on as a teacher, or if you're training staff, or if you're someone that wants to be selling courses. So it's really going to be that starting point. You land on that page and there's already things semi-built for you and it's very simple to get that set up. Um, and our next other major thing is we want to um, be able to offer custom domain hosting for certain plans for us so that you can choose, um, it could be your school or your business, those sorts of things. Because um, at the moment it's everything's at moodlecloud.com and that might not ser serve some people. So. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Has uh, anyone got any questions? Exercise. Come on. Someone's got a question. Uh, 
Uh, what about the apps? Um, it's obviously a, a decision that um, you can't add plugins uh, to uh, Moodle Cloud. And what, what's the thinking behind that? Do you think that will ever change? Um, not, probably not for Moodle Cloud, to be honest. Um, because we're so, we're focusing on just, you know, the smaller sort of sites and it, I mean, you think about all the plugins that are available, there's certain ones that, you know, they really need to be maintained to be able to have that safe, secure infrastructure if people start, you know, wanting to add all different things. Some of them might not be maintained. Um, and yeah, we, our main focus is trying to make everyone's sites run smoothly and that's why we generally offer them to the services and partners. It's a bit more detailed to go into adding different plugins. Um, yeah. An alternative could be to perhaps provide uh, some of the top uh, most used and favorite plugins perhaps, but uh, I, I, I take your point. Thanks for answering that. Yeah, definitely. Sorry to add to that. You know, we're always um, thinking about what we can add to Moodle Cloud that would help Moodle Cloud. And yeah, if there's ones that would help our personas and in, in that situation that are top five, the problem is, is everyone wants different things and there's so many options. And I think it's really trying to find ones that solve Many, yeah, many things, so, yeah. Okay, so following on from that, uh, maybe one suggestion for one that you could include. Because I think H5P is not the actual H5P Moodle plugin, is it the one that doesn't track uh, in Moodle Cloud? Because there's two different sort of flavors, isn't there? It's, yeah, H5P that's in Moodle Core. Yeah, which yeah. is slightly different to that, doesn't track so well. Uh, so I think H5P would definitely be one at the top of the list to include. I think it's really popular. Yeah, you're right. H5P is always on our list. It's always <laughs> how can we improve that as well. So 